Okay, we're back for another late night review, courtesy of my good friend Jonathan from Santa Ana, Wings. This movie was filmed between 1926 and 27, and it is the first Academy Award winner of Best Picture. Uh, it says the first Academy Award winner, 1927 and 28, so I think it was like the 1929 Academy Awards. This is what they call a synchronized sound picture, although it is the only considered the only silent film to be a Best Picture winner. This particular VHS copy is 139 minute runtime. So let's talk about that for a second. So the original theatrical release, release was 135 minutes. However, there was a restored recent version of the film, I think 2012 they did a, or 2017 right around there between either tw no 12 they did a re-release restored version of that movie is 144 minutes so even five minutes longer than this vhs copy here this is the 1989 paramount vhs release prolific movie this movie was inducted into the national film registry archives in 1997 being culturally significant Innovative, to say the least. This movie was groundbreaking for the time. So, in 1927, it was released as a purely silent film, but it was on the tail end of the silent film era. And then it was re-released again in 1928, and then again in 1929 as what they called a synchronized sound. So they added in a soundtrack, and they added in sound effects. This movie was made in cooperation with the U.S. military, and it was, think about it, it was filmed about nine years after the actual World War One. The only real thing that drove me nuts and the director was trying to be as accurately as possible. The director's a guy named William A. Wellman, and he was actually a combat aviator or army airman during World War One. He did not have regulation military haircuts. He forsook the authenticity of, and using cars of the late 20s. So he dropped the ball on authenticity of vehicles. He wasn't using 1916, 1917 cars. He was using 1927 cars. And all of the haircuts and fashions of the civilians was late 20s instead of more of the teens so besides that the movie is highly technically accurate so they developed all kinds of techniques for the aerial and that's what really kind of gave me my score in the end is the aerial acrobatics so let's talk about a little let's talk a little, i'm going all over the place here <laughs> let's talk about where this film was made it had a budget of $2 million, which was a lot. Most movies of the era were shot and in the can in a month. This movie took nine months to make. And it was shot in San Antonio at a place called Kelly Field in Texas. Over 300 uh, pilots were used. The U.S. Army Air Corps let them use their pilots as well as planes. And then they assisted and supervised the original story was by John Monk Saunders, but it was rewritten by Hope Loring and Louis D. Lighton to add in the it girl of the era, Clara Bow. She, her character was kind of one of the romantic tie-ins of the movie. She was later on, she remarked about her part in the picture. She said, this is a man's picture. She did not like her role. This is a man's picture, and I am just the whipped cream on top of the pie. So... And this movie, I tried to get my mom to watch it with me, and it is kind of just, it's a war movie. And it's a different time period, so not everyone is going to get into this movie. And I, and I found that it kind of was starting with me in the early part of the movie, when they were civilians, before they transitioned into their military role overseas in France. It was getting kind of iffy for me, and I wasn't sure. But then when they go overseas, and the war stuff happens, and the aerial acrobatics are going on, and the dogfights are going on, then I was engrossed in the movie. And it kept my attention throughout. So, <clears throat> that being said, the planes, I was very curious. They used Thomas Morse MB3s. And for the German planes, they used American Curtis. I believe Curtis is an American plane. Curtis P1 Hawks that were dressed in the German library of the time. P1 
people died. There was over 1,500 military people. I'm sorry. The ground battle scenes were shot over a 10-day period. 3,500 U.S. Army infantrymen and military officers supervised the battle sequences. So this is an action-packed movie, and it's a very long movie. Like I said, 140-minute runtime, roughly. Uh, but it goes by. There is a very Kubrick-esque tracking shot that blew my mind that I had always seen clips of, but I never really knew what it was from where there's like this scene in a French nightclub where there's this just continuous shot that pans over all these people just sitting at cocktail tables. And it's amazing. And all of the aerial sequences, just it blows your mind. Like what they were able to accomplish in 1926 and 1927 with all these aerial dogfight scenes. It's just amazing. So that being said... Rotten Tomatoes, 94%. IMDb, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, the majority of the Google users that had submitted reviews were five stars, but it didn't give me an average, and I could not find it anywhere. I looked hard. That being said, I'm going to dive right in. Five out of five. At first, I was kind of like, mm, maybe I'm in the three and a half to four, but then as the movie wore on, and you just see the excellence and the quality of the production and what they were doing at the time. It does end in kind of a more lighthearted note with the whole Clara Bow character. Is that her name? The Clara Bow character is just kind of like whatever. I could have done without that storyline. To me, it was about the two friends, Jack and David, and the tragedies of war and the horrors of war. This movie kind of tried to take away from the darkness. Maybe they were trying to give people a little bit of levity because of World War I it was only like nine years before this movie came out. So it, try, it showed the sadness of the war and the gruesomeness of the war. Even the violent scenes were, like, shocking for the time. Also, this is the first movie to show nudity. Clara Bow undressing. Spicy. But it was tame by any means of modern standards. Um, it's just an amazing film and I can't believe I've never seen it until today. Thank you Jonathan for sending me this digitally recorded score. <laughs> that was a detractor for me. I would like to see another version of this. There was a digitally recorded score for this VHS movie performed by Gaylord Carter at the magnificent Woolitzer Pipe Organ. And it did not do it for me. I would like to see another version of this sound with a different soundtrack because that was one of the things that I did not care for. But was that originally how it was meant to be? I don't know and I didn't see anything. <laughs> but it is what it is. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks once again, Jonathan. I will be giving this back to you when I see you next time. We'll see you then, folks.